If you have a Bible, would you turn with me to John chapter 12? Um, a very familiar passage um, where Jesus is anointed by Mary in the village of Bethany. I'll, if you have the Bible, don't worry, I'll read it to you. John chapter 12, verse 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the, t- at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she put it on on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why was this perfume, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in, put in it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me with you. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, Many of the Jews were, give, were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. Well, that is the word of God. Just imagine you were um, immensely wealthy, immensely wealthy, and you were, you were in love with somebody. I mean, what would you give them? What would you just, we could think about the presents you could give them. Let's say it was, it was perfume. Now here's a tip for you, lad. Just if you know, just a few, just to uh, you know. And I saw this in Harrods, some Lalique Solai. Not many of you shop in Harrods, but never mind. It was this perfume was twenty-one and a half thousand pounds for the bottle. But then I saw a better one advertised from a firm called Shamuk, which was one and one point two seven million dollars for. The, but with the bottle, you did get a diamond on the bottle. But then for you cheapskates, I saw this one by Chanel, the Grand Extract, which was just, well, it was 4,000, just over 4,000 pounds an ounce. And then a cheap one by Louis Vuitton, it was, it was uh, it, well, that was 6,500 pounds an ounce. So here's a few ideas. A few men, David. He's not buying it. Sorry, sorry, Jenny, sorry. He's too wise a man. But anyway, but uh, this is an extraordinary moment in history when this woman does this. And um, I just want to look at this, this story because it it's, it's frighteningly fascinating. Let's just set the scene first of all. Jesus, a, a few days ago, has raised Lazarus from the dead. He'd been dying and he died and he'd, he'd been dead four days, but Jesus raised him. And so this meal is given in his, his honor. But it's very dangerous because the thing is that Jesus is the talk of the town, but even greater, Lazarus is. You imagine, Kendall, this man has been dead. He was dead, certified dead four days, and he's been raised. So he's a great attraction. And so the Jews, the leaders of the Jews said, you know, all are coming to believe him. And if the, many come to, all to believe him, the, Jews, the, the Romans will come and take away our place, that's the temple, and our nation, any rule we had, will, be, will have gone. 
And so they plan not only to kill Jesus, but they're going to kill Lazarus. And so you would have thought Jesus, the wise thing, would have gone north, gone north back to Galilee, but he stays locally. He goes back, if you've been to Jerusalem, he goes back over the hill to Bethany, two or three miles, to the village of Bethany, where his friends Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived. And this evening, they don't, they don't go to this house, they go to the house of a man called Simon. Simon was a leper who Jesus had healed. So it's an amazing gathering. You've got 17 people, about 17 people, gathered around this low table, all lying at 45 degrees probably towards it. And uh, it's, an ama- it's given in the honor of, well, Mary's done it really because of Lazarus. I mean, you can imagine, this is amazing. This is amazing, really. It's a fantastic time. And uh, it's just a great party. And, um, and then... She, in the, Mary's obviously brought this vial of perfume with her. And in the, in the, at the end of the meal, sometimes she nips off and gets this bottle of perfume. Where, where she got it from? Because it was worth 30, 300 days' work, so which is by Kendall standards, 20, 25,000 pounds easily. I mean, where she got it from, we don't know whether it was a family heirloom, whether she was saving it for her wedding, or whether it was something she would perhaps use for her own burial or her, her parents' burial. We don't know. But she had the, the most valuable thing she possessed. It's an enormous thing. It's, and it, it kept its currency, did perfume, and it's nard, which is a, got from the extract of plants that lived in the, sun, the sort of low Himalayas, you know, Tibet, China, India, Nepal. And, you know, it really was the best. And she pours it out on his, on his feet. Actually, in the Matthew version, it says she poured it all over him, his head as well. And then she, she does the unforgivable thing. She lets her hair down because it's everywhere. <laughs> you imagine, you know, a pint of this stuff. It wasn't a dab or a little spray. No, no, this was, she brought the vial and pours it on him, half a pint, well a pint. This is ridiculous. I mean this really is over the top. And uh, so she pours it on his feet and it's amazing. Uh, this is 20,000 pounds as it were, like that. And um, well, it signif- what's it's all about this? Because it's the only place in Scripture where Jesus says, wherever the good news of, of Christianity and the gospel is preached, what this girl has done will be talked about. And in Kendall this morning, on the 6th of November, we're doing just that. That's what we're doing. The only, one thing, the only time Jesus says that. So let's look at So here we are in this, this amazing dinner party that she's given for Lazarus and um, it's just true, what I want to say, first of all, it's just true worship. She's just loved Jesus. She just, well, obviously thinks the world of him. I mean, how can she please him? What, what, what can she do? I mean, look, there's Lazarus. Look, there he is. That's my brother. I love my brother. He died. He was really ill. And I knew he would die. And he died. End of story. No. This man, Jesus, comes. And raises him from the dead. It's, un, un, it's unknown. It's amazing. And um, it's crazy that she would pour this on. It's extravagant. It's reckless. Over the top. It's wild. And the, the people are aghast because they could smell now. There's nothing like it. It's the most exotic of all perfumes. And it just fills the whole room. And it's not a drop. She pours it out. And... Uh, and that's what it's about, really. Why is it here? Because actually, quite simply, this is what God is after. He doesn't want our time. He doesn't want our money. He doesn't want our efforts. He wants really our hearts. He wants you. That's what, that's what we, we, we don't cover our tracks. That's what we're about. That's what God is about. He wants our life. He doesn't want to play at religion. We're good at that. He says, my son, give me your heart. In the, in. So anyway, 
And, and she, she doesn't try and explain it. She doesn't try and cover up. She lets the perfume do the talking. Let the fragrance do the talking. And it's, it's irrational, isn't it? In many ways. If you've been, I've been to India many times. I used to work in India a bit. And, you know, I've been to the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal must be the most beautiful building in the world. It's fantastic. Why would you spend what, several billion pounds, Shah Jahan, on it's just a tomb? Love is wacky. Love is strange, isn't it? I mean, why would 75,000 people trek through London, through the night, past the a body of a dead woman, an old lady, which we saw when our dear queen died? It's, you know, you can't explain it. What a waste of time. You can see it on the telly, you know? But love is like that. And, uh, and this is what God is after and for, from all of us. And, um, and it's not that she's not doing it to gain anything. You know, well, we, we worship God, we go to church because it does us good, as it were. No, no, she's not doing that. You know, I remember as a kid when I used to be helpful at home, my mother said, what are you after? It's what you call cupboard love, isn't it? Cupboard love, I used to call it. What do you, what do you want? You're not usually like that. <laughs> and it's a bit like that. But there's nothing in that, right? But the thing is, it, 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 true worship, true love for Jesus, true, uh, true Christianity will always be criticized. And so here, let, let you, I read it, it says, But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. And let's not just malign him, or we'll come back to him, in the Matthew version, all the other disciples said the same thing. They all, it says, they all objected. What a waste! I mean, this really is, you imagine 20 grand on the floor, as it were. It's, it's, it's ridiculous in a poor country. It's, it is amazing. And um, this, it's over the top, isn't it? But this woman's, and then not only that, she lets her hair down. That's difficult for some of us, but anyway. But she, um, she Jesus, she's got it right. Of all, of, she, of all people, Jesus, she, she's just got it right. She's got it. And Judas speaks out. Uh, he works out the cost. He knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. You know, and um, he sees it. Now, I want to juxtapose these two people because I see myself more in Judas than I do in Mary, if I'm honest. We'll come to that in a minute. But he's thinking, you know, he's, he's got a social conscience. Now, let's be clear, Judas was apostle. He cast out demons, he healed the sick, he heard the Sermon on the Mount, he heard the, the Olivet Discord, he heard the teaching of Jesus for three years, he wasn't, if you'd seen him on a, a page, he wasn't the scowling lucky one. No, Jesus loved him. He was, Jesus loved him. You couldn't pick him out of the crowd. Oh, he's a bad one. No, and when he went healing, healing with the rest of them, they didn't say there's something wrong with this guy. In fact, they trusted him so much they made him treasurer. I mean, you don't, you don't ask people to look after the money if you don't trust them. And... Um, but anyway, he never got it. You know, that's the frightening thing. I've been uh, all my life in religious organizations, churches. You can, you can spend all your life in a great church like this and still miss it. And that's the frightening thing. That's why we have services like this. Because we're desperate that you see the wonder of it. And you don't take it for granted. or you, It doesn't go over your heads. That's what we're concerned about. Because uh, it did with dear old... Dear old Judas. Jesus loved him. I mean, that, that was the frightening thing about it. But he loved money. He loved money. And, um, and not only that, the other disciples, they rebuked her. And the word that's rebuked is used, they were, oh dear, this is terrible. It's, the word that's used for rebuke is the word of snorting of horses. They were furious. What a waste of money. And we could have spent that. I mean, I worked in, you could do, I don't know how many thousand congenital cataract operations. I don't know, thousands, perhaps millions of kids are born with blind in India. 
Or, or you could have done thousands of operations. It's a very simple operation, really, for a, uh, an eye surgeon. Or else you could have, you know, feed the poor. How many, if you watch the television, how many vials of penicillin could you give him for 20,000? And he, he's worked it out. It sounds very spiritual, but it's, it's just, it's, it's heart. It's won by money. Now, I want to say this. Because, and God spoke to me with this quite clearly, you know, this is how I was brought up. And this is not to put my mother down. I was brought a single home family. My mom brought me up. And, uh, but this was our philosophy. Lad, what matters is w- m- wealth. Once you, if you get wealth and money, you, you're fulfilled. You're happy. You, you're power. You can buy houses, cars. You know, you'll even impress the girls, you know. So what you do, you earn it. Or in our case, you learn it. If you're a revolutionary, you go and burn it. But anyway, that's, that's another sermon of that. But, and, but that, that's how we're brought up. You know, nothing malicious, but that's... And that's how our country runs in Britain. Money. You watch an evening on television, it's all about winning this money, this prize, this bargain, whatever. That's how this country runs. But it's contrary to what the living God is after. Because it actually, it doesn't deliver the goods. Now, I'm not against working hard. You know, we have to work hard. But money is a terrible master. It's a great servant, but he's a terrible master. And, and that's why I look at this guy. He, he was in the religious gang with Jesus and, and all the rest of it. But he missed it because money had his heart, wealth had his heart. Oh, he sang the songs, he could, you know, say amen. But actually, what he lived for was wealth, what he could buy. And it spoke to me that. And, but it's a, a terrible thing. Jesus, you can't serve wealth and me and, and God. You can't do it. It's going in the opposite direction. And, and, and so we know at the end it's very sad because he knew Jesus. Well, perhaps Jesus is going to fail, really. So he goes to the, the Jewish people, Jewish leaders, and says, if you, I know you're after him. I know you can get him. Just We're going to meet in Gethsemane. If you know Jerusalem, you drop down over the Kidron and go into Gethsemane, and we're going to meet there tomorrow evening. And... Um, how much do you want? And you get 30 pieces of silver. That's the price of a slave. Price of a slave. Well, that'd be good out of my own servant. Very uh, you know, up in the upmarket there. It's very sad, isn't it? How, how, how will we recognize Jesus? Well, the, I, the, he, I will kiss him. He's the one. It's because it's dark, it's guest I mean, it's not, There was no lights in those days. They'd carry them, but I will kiss him. You know the story well. And, um, and so he comes. And then it says, after they broke bread, the last supper, Satan entered into the heart of Judas. And that was the hardest thing when he goes to Jesus and he says, Rabbi, and kisses him. And that's the hardest thing because Jesus loved him. And he says, even my close friend, the one who broke bread with me, has betrayed me, has lifted his heel against me, as it were. That was the heart. He was, she just genuinely loved him. So that's the way the world lives. He was a good man. In the world's eyes was Judas. He cared for the poor, attended, was with religious people. But the real hero, or whatever the model, is Mary. <laughs> and, and Jesus says, leave her alone. Because she has seen it. She has seen it. She has seen it. She's only a country girl, you know. You know, and um, she's seen something of of, of, the, of infinite worth. Um, that um, it, this wasn't a flash of uh, of you know revelation. She sat at Jesus' feet and she listened to him, and and she realized, that, who is this person? She'd never met anybody like him. She'd never met anybody like this person, Jesus. And this is my story at nineteen as well. Not quite as grand as this. But this is my story. Who is this Jesus? We sung these songs who would die for me. 
I thought, if Jesus is God, and the, he had said to his disciples that he was the son of the living God, and Mary believed him, the son of the living God. And nobody was like Jesus, nobody. I mean, you don't go into a cemetery and say to a, to a tomb, come out! And blow me, he walked out. What authority? He speaks to demonized people, and they come out. He lays his hand on the sick, and he's not, he didn't shout, it just one sentence, and they healed. But when he spoke... She came alive. She, there's nobody like him. And I never felt, I was just loved by him. It was amazing. Just to be in his presence, to sit at his feet. There was nothing like him. You can't, you, you can't describe it. And not, He wasn't a miserable person. He was, the joy to be with, there was something about him. It was incredibly joyful and wonderful. I mean, it was as if God was there. And he was. And she saw it. And, and I mean, the disciples were the same. They couldn't get over it. It was crazy. I mean, one of his disciples, well, the only way I could describe it was glory. <laughs> we saw his glory full, full of grace and truth. And not a bit. Not, he had no off days. He didn't think, what will he wake up like this morning? No. Every day. He was anointed with joy above his brothers, it says. It was just incredibly glorious. And that, not only that, well, he made sense. See, I, was, I went to university looking for wisdom. I went for a degree and other things that were thrown in. But you, what is life about? And then I saw it. I was, we were studying ologies, you know. Pharmacology and all these ologies. And we did, didn't we, David? But, I, and the, but he is the ology, the logos. He made sense of all the other ologies, the all other subjects. He made sense of them all. And he says, I am the way. Oh, thank goodness. I didn't, what, this, what's this life about? What is life about? Oh, I didn't ask to come into this world. But Jesus says, no. But actually, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Really? You want, what is God like? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Praise the Lord. That makes it simple. Yeah, the, the Father's in me and I'm in you. As one, as one little boy said, he was the best picture God ever took, right? And, uh, and she saw it. No, she didn't see it all at once. And it, I have to say this, I remember saying to her, uh, are you telling me that Jesus died for me? The Son of God died for me? I don't believe it. And then I would say, could you tell me again, David? <coughs> well, I told you last week, and I know, but tell, I don't quite get it. And it took, some people are very bright and some of us are very thick. And it took me years. So, you know, we're on a journey. But actually, that's, but Jesus, I am the way. I am the truth. You're looking for truth in life? I am the truth. And, and he goes that way. And, um, and she sees it. I mean, this woman sees it. it it's amazing, isn't it? That uh, she should do that. And uh, Jesus, leave her alone because she has given her the credit. She has anticipated my death. She doesn't really know what she's done in one sense. Because he di Jesus didn't just come to be a good teacher. He didn't come to be a good example. He didn't just give us, to give us a, a bit of help in life. He came to be a savior. To seek and save. And we are desperately lost in every aspect of our life. And he came. And I saw that. Now, if you're struggling and looking, some of us take a heck of a long while to see it. But hang on then. You know, he did it. And, and he opened her, her eyes and she, and she saw it. And, and he, he put... And so she, she, she just loved this person. We sung that wonderfully early, didn't we? And she... What can I do? Well, I've got this perfume. I've had it in a, I've had it in a cupboard for years. You can't do that. What a waste. What a waste. And she did it. And, and, and Jesus was thrilled. He was thrilled with it. <laughs> and and, and she said, he, she, he said, she has done something beautiful. Beautiful. It's, it's the only place, he says that in the Matthew bit. And um, people will always say, well, you know, you don't, you're over the top, really. You know. Don't ever listen to be people to, who tell you to moderate your love for Jesus, my friends. And people often say, well, this life, you die, you, you, you die don't you? And you rot. 
you'll finish up at Lanc- Lancaster Crematorium or in some hole in the ground round Kendall. No, Jesus says, no, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, will live. Whoever believes and lives and believes in me will never die. You will never die. I'm going to prepare a place for those who love me. But, um, but the world says, what a waste. What a waste. Some of you people, when I left this illustrious town and was called to go into Bible, to Bible ministry, I remember a farmer saying, one of my dad's friends, what a waste. What a waste. And people say that. What a waste of a life when you give your life to serve the Lord. And so I remember someone in a religious, another denomination said the same. What a waste. And they'll always do that. I mean, why spend your time with a lot of people like this room full, eh? Well, this lot. What a waste of time. I could introduce you a lot smarter people in Kendall. Easy. <laughs> what a waste. No, I'm serious, you know? You, I mean, you, you pray all night. All, what, you have an all-night prayer meeting. We have, what a waste, right? You give to the poor. They're a, lot, they're a waste of time, that lot. Jesus says, you've done a beautiful thing. If you do it into the least of these with my brethren, you do it to me, right? What a waste, you know? But this girl, this lady got her priorities right. She got her priorities right. That's what I'm saying. And we have to get our priorities right. And um, that's what God calls us to. To do, to, how can we show our love for him? And um, you see, as we, do, as we do the will of God, Jesus says you did something beautiful. When you give to the poor, nobody else sees it. Jesus says, you've done a beautiful thing. As you, somebody rubbishes you, somebody runs you and thinks you're a lot of a waste of time and says them terrible things, but you forgive them. Jesus says, you've done a beautiful thing. When, when, when there's a real mess and everybody's gone home and it's a real scrow around here, and it's, where have they all gone? But you clean it up, the Lord says, Jesus says, you've done a beautiful thing. When you write a letter to somebody who's desperate just to encourage them, nobody sees it, it's you and that person. Jesus says, you've done a beautiful thing. The world will say, what a waste of time. But we do it for Jesus, right? Right? And, 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 and that's how we're meant to live. But the world will always say, what a waste of time. Helping those people, they're a waste of time. No, no, not at all. She got her priorities right. And you have to, that's what we have to decide. Who are we going to serve? Who are we going to live for? You, are, you can either follow Judas, as the most world does, and we have a little social conscience, the poor, or else we will do what the will of God, which is we, 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 we serve, seek first his kingdom. And, and the thing is, worship is never private, you know. It says the whole play, the room was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. What you folk do as you serve is fragrant. I am here this morning because as a student, you know, before I was a student, in a town 40 miles south here, I met men, 20s, who had something about them which smelt of Jesus. That's why we're here. And you, you're the same. Some of you are here because you don't agree with everything you say. There might be fundamental Bible-believing sources. But there's something inestimable and sweet about them. <laughs> and I thought, I want what these people have got. I don't, I don't agree with them, but I just like the smell. Right. And that's true. You know, you don't know what you're doing, the fragrance. The word is spread by the word and smell. You're right. <laughs> It's the word and smell. It's character. And, um, and that's, why, well, that's why we're here. And, um, and he says, she's done a beautiful thing for me. She's done a beautiful thing. She got her priorities right. But it, it wasn't magic. It wasn't magic. She didn't say, oh. I'll tell you how she did it. Because she sat at Jesus' feet. 
And that's how she did it. And her sister said, what a waste of time. You know, get, clean, come back in the kitchen. Clean. But Jesus, she has chosen the best part. There's a lad from Ravensondale, a village just north of here. And he was a student when I was in Edinburgh. And he told me about Jesus. And I didn't believe him because he was a bit of a fundamentalist, you know. Bit of a, but I thought, he has something. Something I want. And he introduced to me other people, like people, weird people like you, you know, who believe the Bible. And I thought, no, I'm because I'm, I was very clever. Very, I thought I was. But these people had something I wanted. They were all students. And, um, but it took me years, years. And all I'm saying is, it wasn't magic for her. She just, and I, I plead with you, all of you Christians, every day, you open your word and say, Lord, speak. And I've been 60 years, I said. Sorry, I, sh- I shouldn't have said that. I, said, I can't lie. <laughs> Reading this, you know, and say, Lord, speak. Let me hear you. And you come on Sunday and say, Lord, speak. Because we, we, we're pretty slow people, aren't we, really? But, you know, God is gracious. And eventually, I got it. I got it. Thank you. It took me about, I left, when I left university, I think I got it. But it took a heck of a long time. So don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. It's not magic though. Don't, it's, don't just say, well, come at the front and we'll pray and zoom, you'll be all right. Now, I'm going to ask you to come to the front and David and I'll pray with you. We can't make you a Christian, but we can help you to make a commitment. But we, we begin and we say, now what we're, what we're asking you to do now is to say, Lord, speak. Every day, and he does speak. And the picture gets glorious and wonderful. You know, it, it gets wonderful, doesn't it? It's not in five minutes. I love the program on the television, the Portrait Artist of the Year. I watch it on Sky Art. And they're just four hours. and It's just wonderful how it comes together. It's not just a few strokes. And as we read this book, you can't just do it with a few strokes. You've got to take time to, to come to see the glory and the wonder of Jesus. I mean, that's, that's, if God had come on earth and died for you, what is more important, right? Not only that, he says, I'll be with you all your life. I will strengthen you. I will guide you. I'll put my spirit within you. Not only that, when you die, it gets infinitely better and all that. You know, but I'm with you. But you have to commit yourself. You have to make a decision. I'll go the way of Mary. Don't, be, don't, don't go half cock. Do it, you know, go for it flat out. Don't mess around. Don't say, well, we'll see how we go on. You've got Mary's way or Jesus' way. It is a clear choice. You go the way of the world and you give occasionally to the charity or you go the way of Mary who give totally to the Lord. And Jesus says, she has done a beautiful thing. That's what God wants you to do today. Some of you have come and you've been coming for ages and you still haven't got it. Come after us and David and I and others will pray with you to, so you can commit. And it's a journey and, and, it, and it leads from glory into glory. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word and I just pray that by your spirit you will open the eyes of all our hearts that we would see something, your inestimable wonder and glory, that we would see what Mary saw. We pray for that. We pray that you would deal with our hard hearts that have been programmed by the world. And I don't know how many years or months or years we have left to us that we will be totally sold out to coming to know you and to follow you and to receive from you all your fullness. Lord, by your grace, minister to us in all our different needs. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, David.